Well, forgive me, I'll take the sunnies off. <laughs> you want to see the whites of his eyes. Um, as promised, part two of my Strawberry Fields Forever video. I actually think I found the tree, so we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, there's no denying that I found the arch. <laughs> you can't dispute that, can you? The arch is the arch. Um, it it's just is. So, yeah, here's the arch. Um, obviously, clearly, it stands. On the far left of the arch, we've got the remnants of the corner of what was per perhaps once a, a walled garden or something. Um, and if I superimpose this image with George Harrison and Ringo Starr, then, yeah, there's no disputing. The arch is the arch. Now, what I thought was the tree and also the pond. I'm not sure about the pond. I might have to go back there in a moment and we'll just have another look at that because there's a possible second pond which I've walked past. Uh, but it's, it's, it's not, yeah, we'll see what it is. But the tree, this one here, which I was like emphatically confirming, this is the one, yeah, 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 leads me to look at this tree here. What do you think of that one? Sorry, I've got to put my glasses back on. I was looking on what three words, and I was looking on Google Earth, you know, really scouting around, seeing if I could find, you know, what was potentially the tree. And this one came up, and I thought, oh yeah, you know, this one's got all the trademark, like the one limb of a branch coming out there, and the other branch coming down from an, an, an overview, looking down on the map. I thought, oh, this is the one. But actually, the surrounding country just does not fit the MO. Which is a shame because, you know, with that limb out there and we know that it was sawn off on the, on the Beatles image. So we discount this one. We actually discount the second one, which is the first one I saw in my other video. If you've watched the other video, link up here. Um, I got rather excited. I was like, oh, this is the one. And I kept going back to it and back to it. Um, but so many of you... Um, 16, 15,000 views on that video. Astonishing. Thank you very much, everyone that viewed it. And also those that have liked and subscribed, subsequently subscribed. And of course, if you have subscribed, what you're going to get now is the definitive tree. And I will show you for why. So let's trek back down that direction. And um, yeah, we'll look, we'll look at the pond. Again, get complete confirmation. What I also want to do at the end of this video, once I leave Knoll Park, is have a little stroll into the High Street in Seven Oaks because that's where there was once an antique shop where John bought his poster. You know what poster I'm talking about, don't you? So, also, um, Yellow Jacket. I had this idea. A little pub quiz. <laughs> pub quiz, pop quiz. The Beatles named three yellow things in certain songs. One of them is obviously a given, you know, underwater, nothing to do with octopuses. So we had the, I'm not going to say it because you'll know it, but there are two other references to a yellow object. So comment below. I'm not going to give the game away. I know what they are. Um, let's see how, how <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say how true to the Beatles you are. You know all their lyrics. Oh, there's always an aeroplane flying over. Can you hear me over the aeroplane? So three yellow things, pub quiz. Top marks if you get all three. Right, let's go down and um, look at these two other um, locations. By the way, that's not the tree. Oh, if it were. <laughs> anyway. So I've been doing a little bit of isolation, caught the dreaded sea. I'm not going to say the word because YouTube's algorithm tends to um, block if you mention it, at least if you advertise your video anymore on Google Ads. But anyway, I spent the time looking at the photographs and really, really analysing them and comparing them to the Google Earth images and Google Maps because they're quite definitive. And if you do an aerial shot and an aerial view, you can actually get a good lay of the land. So in terms of the pond, there's actually two little ponds here. Now the 
Birdcage House is just up there and there's the archway. You just make it out from here. Now if I overlay this map, and it actually has these areas marked out, and it kind of gave the definition of that tree I was just at. So it gave the definition of the, of the, um, the pond um, as being kind of just down from the archway, just up there. And I've got these two ponds here. And if you kind of remove all the fern and everything, you've got this edge of this tree, which does appear in the video shot, but it would imply that if that was the lake, then I'm standing where the, where the um, tea party would have been held, because there's a brick-walled garden at the back there. So these two ponds, that, that kind, of, kind of works. If you look there, there's the single tree, and anywhere along here they could have done it. The fern wouldn't have been here, but, you know, 54 years ago. It's, it's the brick wall and the, the, the walled garden at the back. So I'll just walk up here. I want to do some superimposing and overlaying the images of the actual photographs that have been taken because by doing that, I kind of really cement it in my head and maybe in yours. Have you thought, of that? Have you thought about those three songs yet that contain a reference to something that's yellow. <laughs> what I'm after from you, name of the song and the sentence of the lyric that's that song in it. <laughs> I mean, the first one's obvious, isn't it? Because we, we all live in one. So I'm going to situate myself where I think, am I allowed to go in where the fern is here? Where they would have had the camera because there's this one shot showing the film crew actually filming the lads on their horse clambering <laughs> through the fern here. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get told off. This is likely to be maybe a little to the right here. Old dead tree. I've got to get just at the right place where there's a hint of the bird cage from Last time I was here, I stood on that road. If we get here, okay, so that's about it. If I was the cameraman focusing in on this scene, you'd have had them coming out with their horses from the birdcage, superimpose that image now. That works, no denying. The edge of the walled garden with the remains of the brick wall, we had all of the horses riding off, but I'll superimpose this picture that I found of Ringo on his horse. Super duper, get back out of this fern. I feel like David Attenborough. <laughs> Here we see young intrepid film location scout looking with eagerness to find, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> so I do apologize for leading you on a merry goose chase with this tree, because as I was standing around it and looking at it, I'm thinking, yeah, this is the one. And I know and agree that the original tree was much, much bigger. And this one's kind of chopped off at the top. It is in a good location. And yes, I do agree that the road is just behind it. But you know what the main thing for me was the lay of the road, which you know, but also the North Downs. Now they are so iconic, they're not gonna move. I know we're gonna see different growths of veg vegetation, the trees, they'll change. But you see that little line of trees there? There's one dead one. One, two, three, four. There's the green. They are a factor. And, and, and this tree, which I'm lying under, and as much as I'm in the right line for the road, as you can see, those trees are not those trees over there. And I also want to bring into play 
doing my detective work with my finger. This clump of trees here. So a comment was made by, I think it was Vince Cox, invited me to meet him up here. Um, but he did actually leave a comment saying, from the birdcage house, which is over there, I'll get my hand in the sea. <laughs> The bird's cage house and the archway walk along that path there and then a hundred yards on the left just that direction is where the tree would be so coming from here bird cage house and the archway there swing around here to the left and then in this vicinity can you see it yeah in this vicinity stood the tree and i say stood because that is all that's left of it and i'm going to do some superimposing of images to completely confirm it it's quite exciting actually because it puts the myth to bed for me <laughs> that that tree wasn't the tree i oh, wish it had been but it's not so off with the jacket we're going to do a little bit of explanation here birdcage house behind me in the clump of trees these clumps of trees play an important part sorry the sun's glare because the film production would have there's the stump we would have had a camera just around here and you've seen them here's an image of it the piano just to the to the left there tree in its glory standing up here can you imagine it imagine there's no tree i'm going to do some fancy post-processing and put the tree in de -de -de <laughs> oh, i call that artistic license <laughs> so whatever angle i stand here now now let's go back here this is what we were talking about the trees here play an important part and the reason is you had the refreshments wagon you had the driver bringing the land um, rolls royce delivering john for his shoot and um, but yeah all these long kind of what are they uh larches um hiding the sun perfect so that confirms it for me here's a couple of overlaid shots with these trees Oh, it's exciting seeing the birdhouse cage trees behind me. Yes, people, I found the stump. Mm -mm. Got the stump. There's no denying that. You've got where those people are walking just across there. That's our road for the mini car. Wake up, camera. That's the road for the mini car. Perfect. Just a little to the left of the stump the row of trees there's actually a nice little array of trees going down the hill there but it's this track this track here oh my god I've got to get my hand in the picture there's this track here on this side and then there's a track going down joining the road so that confirms to me once and for all that the tree stood here I mean it must be high or low. <laughs> uh. Piano. Um, those big kettle drum drums scattered around. Oh, I love this. A little bit of the history. And this is the actual one. I'm not going to take a little chunk of it. I think that's sacrilege. You know, the fact that it's here and I can visit it whenever I want. Do I tell you where it is? Are you going to bombard the place and then come and actually take a, a bit off? It would be such a shame if that's what would happen. However, because it's public domain, you know, I'm not going it, to... It's not a secret. Here, bottom of the screen, what three words? The exact one metre square that this tree sitting in so with that confirmed confirmed once and for all the archway 
<laughs> Confirmed the location of the pond for the Penny Lane tea party. Confirmed the tree. That's the one. I do wish it was still standing, but you know what? 54 years later, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? What's left? Now, comments were talked about for the benefit of Mr. Kite in 1967, on the 31st of January, filming was breaking for lunch. And John had spoken to Tony Bramwell. I've read this, that Tony said, John wanted a drink and said, let's go for lunch because the, the filming had broken for lunch. And so they headed back into town along the high street, just in Tony's words, three doorways or th three doors from the hotel they were staying was an antique shop. And John went into the antique shop. So we're going to go there. And then I'm also going to, on my way out, go to Brastead, 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 B-R-A-S-T-E-D. English language. I cannot confirm how this is pronounced. I've always said brasted. Is a right brasted. But it could be brasted. Anyway, I'm waffling. Um, we have the grave for, uh, is it Alan Clive? Clive Allen? I'm wasting my words here. He was the, the French horn player on For No One. Right, let's have a look here. What did I do with my phone? <sighs> I had to get my phone out. I was calling him Clive Allen, or Alan Clive. Alan Civil. Alan Civil was a French horn player. And I want to go to Brasted, Brasted, and conclude the video with a little kind of, you know, stand by his graveside. Thank him. <laughs> so that's it. That's where we're at with this. I don't need to come back here now done it haven't I I'm glad I came the first time because the first time was very much a um, excited moment in my time because I was going to come and find the tree and disprove everybody <laughs> alas the tree isn't standing so yeah archway mm -mm. pond mm -mm. tree it's all fabulous so I probably said this already, but I'll say it again, <laughs> just for completeness. It's January the 31st and production of Broken for Lunch. And John says, I want a drink to Tony Bramwell. So they come out, they would have walked out here. Some um, no part behind me. Out onto the high street. And um, Tony Bramwell if you look online, you'll find his um, kind of interview. And he said that there was, um, they were heading back to the hotel that they were staying at on the high street here. And three doors down from the high street was the antique shop. And John went into the antique shop just you know have a look around and discovered the poster and you know the poster I'm talking about for the benefit of Mr Kite there will be a show tonight on trampoline and of course Henry the horse dances the waltz <laughs> there's so much written and said about the song that the poster just gave all the lyrics to John Paul is quoted as saying he and John spent the day in John's kitchen actually, um, you know, working out the lyrics and they only changed one or two things. Anyway, walking back around here, I'm actually going to cross the road. Gosh, it's really busy in Seven Oaks today. There is um, a, a well-known photography collection site from over the centuries, the Frith Collection. I don't know if you know of the Frith Collection. So yeah, the Frith Collection, um, they have a, a varied collection of photographs of UK towns and cities from kind of the last century. And there's this one shot, I'll show it to you now. And it depicts the antique shop 
as being 44B or 44A, the High Street. So if we look here, if I superimpose that picture on here, you can see that that is the antique shop. Hey, 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 people. Now, leverets, whatever leverets is. Wouldn't it be cool if they actually had a poster in the window of Mr. Kite's? I don't know what it is, but that was the antique shop. Can't go in because it's shut. Hey, hey. So actually, yeah, one, two, three. Three doors down, this is the Six Bells house. Now, a closed pub because of the whole pandemic. Chances are that was the hotel that the Beatles stayed in, according to Tony Bramwell. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, it's all happening. <laughs> Where am I going? I'm going this way. I wanted to show you something, actually, just the other side here. Not really liking Seven Oaks High Street. It's just chaos. Um, this this building on my right, as we approach now, has got. I noticed it as I was just walking down here. It's called the Red House. Look at that! Isn't that glorious? But if we look at the plaque on the front here. The Red House, built 1686, the home of Dr. Fuller, pharmacist. Who was Dr. Fuller? Was he important? Did he discover something that we don't know about? And later, of Francis Austin, the uncle of Jane Austen. So there you go. Mr. Darcy, I do believe you're taking too much upon yourself. <laughs> yes, I'm a bit of a fan. <laughs> the old pride of prejudice. Right, one more thing to look at. Let's go. Okay, from my last stop, I'm here. St. Martin's Church in Braestead. And I want to kind of just come and give um, a, a, a nod. Is that what you do to someone who's passed away? We'll get to the grave of Alan Civil. As a soloist, French horn player, this is Alan Civil, by the way, just in case you didn't know what he looked like. Um, he was a soloist and he recorded horn concertos of Mozart and his recording of Benjamin Britten's Serenade for Tenor, Horn and Strings is also quite well known. And he also played chamber music in the Alan Civil horn trio so why have i come here today well as well as his classical music civil played the horn solo on the beatles song for no one which goes something like this forgive my rendition but and in her eyes you see nothing <laughs> it says as well as his work for the classical civil music civil played horn solo for the beatles song no one for no one from the album revolver and was one of only five session musicians to get a named credit for a Beatles recording. That is astonishing. I know Billy Preston's probably on there with, with Get Back and Don't Bring Me Down. Who were, if Billy Preston is not one of the named other musicians, perhaps Clapton for his solo on When My Guitar, While My Guitar Gently Weeps? Comment below. Who were the five musicians given a credit? This is turning into a pop quiz video, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, I'm here. Yeah, so I want five musicians from you all. I shall read you his tombstone and epitaph if you can't see it yourself. In loving memory. I think the um, French horn is a nice touch on the on the gravestone. In loving memory of Alan Civil OBE, horn player, born the 13th of June 1929, died the 19th of March 1989. Blow bugle bloy. 
Blow, bugle, blow, set the wild echoes flying. And it has got some notation at the bottom here. So treble clef. Where are we? I think I would know music, but I don't read it. Is that A? So is that A sharp or is that B? Face. F A C E. So A B C. Do 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 do. <laughs> Forgive me. I don't read music. Well, very very badly. So there you go. That's my video as a follow-up part two to Strawberry Fields and filming locations for Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields, No Park. I've kind of laid the ghost to rest. I, um, I found the stump. I want to say hooray, but oh, it's sad as well, you know? Wish that tree was still there. But it is what it is. There we are. We can actually say for certain, I will bet my socks on it, and I'm not going home in bare feet, <laughs> that that was the tree. So there you go. Thanks for watching and bearing with. Oh, the yellow jacket indicates what three songs have a reference to something yellow. I'm going to give you the first one. If you don't know that Yellow Submarine is in the list, then, I don't know, do you really know who the Beatles are? <laughs> I'm not, I know what the other two are, I'm not going to say. I want to see what you guys think. Put them in the comments. I want the song and I want the line of the lyric. Anyway, thank you for watching, bearing with. Um, I can't think that there are any other Beatles locations, certainly where I live short of jumping in my car and driving around the UK to find, you know, in Weybridge, where did they live? In Liverpool, where were all those photographs taken? Other people have done those videos. Or jumping on an aeroplane and flying to the Bahamas for the filming locations of help. <laughs> I should start a Patreon account and you can all fund that and I'll do a video. <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. So thank you for watching, bearing with, and um, give the video a like and subscribe. And in fact, 15, coming on to 16,000 views on my other video. Um, will this video meet that same quota? If every single person that liked the video or even viewed it, hit liked and subscribe, I would be very, very pleased. <laughs> I would be grateful. Come on, click that button here. Um, yeah. Well, what can I say? I'm going to go home and listen to some Beatles music. Bye for now.